We start off with a record breakout for shares of Apple, the stock hitting yet another all-time high today on news that could be a major game changer in the chip world. We kick things off tonight with Josh Lipton. All the details. Josh. So, Melissa, Apple, of course, already designs processors for iPhones, iPads, and watches. And now it is the Mac's turn. Apple is reportedly planned to announce later this month that it is switching from using Intel chips on its Mac computers. Instead, next-gen Macs will come with an ARM-based chip designed by Apple. This comes as Apple stock is on a roll on track for its best quarter now since 2012. The team at Evercore likes what they heard here. They say Apple's ability to design chips like this in-house is underappreciated by investors, in their opinion, as they believe this can help give gross margins a boost. It could also be important for consumers. The report indicates that these new chips are more power efficient with better graphics performance. Lighter, thinner Macs could be on the way. And if these machines are attractive, it could help Apple stand apart from laptop rivals like Microsoft, Dell, Samsung, and HP that use the same Intel chips. Bottom line, how concerned should Intel investors be by all this? I checked in with Bernstein's Stacy Rasgon. He says this won't have a big financial impact for the chip giant. By his math, Apple's a low single digit customer, but he says it could have a reputation impact if consumers, he says, now get more comfortable with Intel alternatives. Melissa, back to you. Right now, this effort is mainly focused for the on the processor for the Macs, Josh, but is there any belief that Apple could be, um, you know, this could be a precursor to making processors for other devices? Yeah, Apple already does, um, you know, design processes for other devices. It's 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 chip guru there, uh, Melissa's executive named Johnny Shruji. Of course, investors like this. Um, it, at kind of deeper, greater vertical integration, you can understand the potential benefits there in terms of cost savings, in terms of competitive advantages. Of course, there's risk there too. You can say you have this chip, but at the end of the day, Cook and his team now will have to execute on that, Melissa. All right, Josh, thank you. Josh Lipton with all the details on Apple. What do we make of this run here in Apple Guy? And could this actually be an advantage? I mean, if you control more of your supply chain, theoretically, that could be good for things like gross margin. You would think. We think it helped margins a lot. With that said, you know, Apple's uh, historically known to sort of squeeze their suppliers. So maybe margins won't improve as much as we think. With that said, you're trying to find a place where you can buy it again. And I'm not pretending I've been some raging bull. I'm not. I've been right, I've been wrong, but the level you have to buy it, I think, is that 325 level or so, which was the previous all-time high. That's where you're looking for a re-entry point. You know, I, I think the next level on the downside is right around the 290 level where it was when it reported earnings. But bear in mind, you know, we've seen this over the last couple of years. You do have significant moves to the downside in Apple every once in a while. We saw it in the fall of 2018 when the stock went from an all-time high then of 225 down to 150, and we obviously saw it recently in the move from 325 down to 240. So it does give you opportunity. I think the first re-entry level is at 325 point. And I'll mention this as well. The good news about this today, obviously the percentage gain is good, but it didn't do it on ridiculously high volume, which means to me, you know, it wasn't some buying uh, capitulation. Probably a lot of that has to do with the absolute price, but, you know, we've been averaging probably 45 million shares or so a day on Apple. We weren't close to that today. So I think that's a good sign going forward. What's your take, Tim, the, uh, on the broader reason why Apple's making this run? Well, it's interesting because, I, I, yeah, if you look at the move in Apple today, uh, whenever Apple moves 3 percent and, and, you know, we're talking uh, about a one point four trillion dollar company. So you guys can all do the math and, and the level guys talking about it. it, it three and a quarter it was really just a couple days ago, but it really outperformed uh, the underperformance in Intel. And I think Josh laid out why uh, this isn't necessarily uh, a dark day for Intel. And I think this expectation had been you know, bandied about for Intel. But uh, back to Apple, as you ask, I, I think it's a combination of the fact that, first of all, uh, potentially more exciting graphics, more exciting AI dynamics, certainly a more modern MacBook. Um, if, in fact, the the ARM chip is, is how they continue to move uh, thinner, lighter battery, you know, kind of a sexier story to the MacBook, which is still not a big uh, needle mover. But I, I do think this is about uh, pushing on the supply chain. I do think this is about vertical integration. I think this is about Apple really being in the driver's seat. And, and that can 
continues to be the case even through difficult times. Um, I, I think it's interesting to note also that in mega cap tech land, this is the valuation during these times, and I mean COVID-19 and whatever the consumer is going to be, um, that, that Apple may be the, more, the most defensible uh, valuation of, of the mega cap, of the mega stocks, of the fang stocks, who all had a massive day today. But again, what do you put uh, 22, 23 times seems to be where consensus is, and that's a blended multiple between iPhones uh, and services 16 to 25. Um, and I think that's why Apple moves today. How do you see the valuation, Karen? Well, um, I, I am long the stock. I see it as actually a little bit stretched. I think that um, obviously we've been talking for a couple of years now about the sort of migration of the business model towards a more steady stream of services. So clearly that's a higher multiple. But um, there's still, remember, there's a hardware company inside here. So that deserves a much lower multiple. And what's the right blend? I'm not really sure. We'll see how the, how the revenue seems to evolve toward more services. But I think, as Tim mentioned, I mean, there was a giant fang rally today. So part of the Apple move was that. And, and I agree with the points about if, if these are better chips and it makes for a better product, that's great. But also, making your own, there's not, that's not without risk, right? And it's also a big intensive project to make your own. Uh, you do control the supply chain, which, as we've seen, that can be troubling. So that's a good thing. I don't know how much of the move that was really on this. I feel like more of it was this sort of fang rotation. And, um, you know, they're, they're clearly a fang stock. And I, I was really surprised, actually, how strongly the fangs did today um, in what I guess was somewhat of a kind of... Um, I don't know, rotation a little bit back, but still, I'm hanging on to Apple. I'm a little bit nervous of the valuation, but I don't have a better idea. Are you nervous, Grasso, about Apple specifically? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, exactly. I'm nervous about everything. So Apple is overbought, so it's registering a 77 on our RSI. That's number one. Number two, services, everyone talked about that, 46 billion. So I'm not so nervous about that arm of the story. I do believe that it is breaking out on a chart. So I think you're okay, even though it's overbought. No, but, but now let's flip it. If I go the other way with the semiconductors, I think what is the headwind for an Intel could be a tailwind for an NVIDIA or an AMD. NVIDIA up 53% year to date. AMD up 23% year to date. So you know what I like to do? Would you rather, I'm staying in Apple, but I would go AMD on a would you rather on the semiconductors. I didn't ask, but I'm glad you did that, I think. <laughs> you never uh, do. I don't think that there has been a single show that you have been on where you did not self would you rather, um, but I'll let it go. I'll let that go. Uh, would you agree, Guy, in terms of a loss for Intel being the gain of, a, of an AMD or an NVIDIA? I mean, one Bloomberg report said that the reason why or one of the reasons why Apple was making this move was because the annual chip performance gains for Intel weren't that strong. They were slowing down. And that's an overall right. problem for it. It may not be a problem today, but it might be a problem a year from now or two years from now. Yeah, and if, I know you're a Molly Hatchet fan, Mel, so I, when I say one man's pleasure is another man's pain, you know exactly what I'm talking about, a great song off of one of their albums. And I think the fact that Intel was just down marginally today speaks volumes about how important Apple is to them and, you know, maybe the fact that, you know, the margins really aren't there for them, so maybe it's actually a good miss. I agree with Steve on the self-would-you-rather AMD, and if you go back to April, I think 29th is when they reported we actually talked about it. I think we said Lisa Sue is going to be on Squawk Box the next day. If you can buy this stock somewhere between 50 and 50 and a half, you buy it with both hands. And effectively, that's what's happened. It hasn't ratcheted higher. I think it's up maybe 12, 13 percent since. But, you know, 59, I think, was the previous high we saw in February. I'm pretty sure it's going to take that out. And it's not that I'm looking to sell Intel here, but I'd rather be long AMD. Back to Apple, though, I mean, you know, Last year was all about the 5G phone and, a, and another phone super cycle that could be on the way here. So, Tim, I'm just curious. There, last week, there was just a report that that release of that new phone could be much later in the year. Are we pricing everything um, good with the, associated with the super cycle because of the new phone in now? I mean, what's, what's going on here in terms of the trade ahead of that new phone release? 
Right. Well, and first of all, what's going on here? Um, please get control of this show, because when these guys are self would you rathering, I mean, I, you know, I, <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, I, I do think you have a case where you've got um, a, a company that let's just quickly remind viewers that we are 62 percent off the intraday low on March 23rd. I think it's 54 percent off that closing low, um, about 72 percent off of the August 2019 lows and then that June spike down low. And guy brought up the fact that Apple's giving you these opportunities. The stock's up 100 um, percent. I find it interesting that despite on a relative discount to the S&P right now, you can make an argument uh, on a forward basis uh, that Apple trades at a slight discount to the S&P. Um, that's great. But when when and Karen talked about it, it's still a hardware company at 20, excuse me, at 16 times multiple roughly, which is where J.P. Morgan puts uh, their hardware business and different analysts, I think, are, are largely lining up. That's significantly higher for the hardware portion of, of this company than than we were giving it a few years ago when we weren't throwing in the other parts in the service models to goose up the valuation overall. So is there a lot of good news in here? Yes. I think that 5G rally w was really part of the rally going into uh, into year end in the part that had us really with our, our jaws dropping before COVID-19 hit. So that is the concern. Uh, there's no concern in terms of Apple, I think, in the strategic model. There's none of this. No one's talking about innovation anymore at Apple, right, and, and lack thereof. Um, no one's talking about capital markets dynamics. Those are good dynamics. Um, I think it's a safe company to own in this environment. But but uh, I, I think the valuation right now could be challenging if you think about things that may not work as perfectly as are, as are in the price. Is anybody concerned about the consumer? Is anyone concerned at this point that the consumer in this environment might not spend a thousand plus dollars on a new phone later this year? I mean, I, I feel like when it comes to this stock, that conversation doesn't enter the fray anymore, Karen. It's assumed that people are gonna buy a MacBook or a phone later on. Right, that's based on many years of history of people buying a MacBook or a phone in uh, almost <laughs> any kind of market, right? Clearly, this is an extraordinary time. But um, I think that I think they will. I think the shift to 5G will be really important. What happens after that, I don't know. But uh, I, th I think the consumer will be there.